Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our presiding guest of honor, Mr. Ashok Kumar Gupta, Chairman, Competition Commission of India, who very kindly consented to preside over the 23rd Convocation Ceremony. Mr. Ashok Kumar Gupta is a 1981 batch IAS officer of the Tamil Nadu Kada. He has had an illustrious career of 40 years in public service, spanning across sectors from industry, finance, health to defense production. Prior to joining the commission, he has held several key positions in the central government, such as Secretary to the Government of India, in the Department of Defense Production, where he was responsible for liberalizing the licensing regime and FDI policy. Previously, he held several positions in the ministries of health, heavy industries, shipping, MSME, commerce, and industry. While posted as Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Health, he was dealing with matters relating to international cooperation, World Bank, and WHO projects. He was instrumental in formulating several government policies, such as automobile policy, Prime Minister's Rojkar Yojana, make procedure in defense procurement, and establishing Vardhman Mahavir Medical College, Delhi. He has extensive experience in industry and has headed and turned around state public sector units and served on the boards of central and state public sector undertakings, such as Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Heavy Engineering Corporation, Tamil Nadu, Cements, and many others. Before moving to the center, he held various positions with the Tamil Nadu government. A gold medalist in mechanical engineering from Delhi University, he also holds a postgraduate degree in public administration from Syracuse University, USA, and an MPhil degree in Defense and Strategic Studies from Madras University. May I now request Mr. Ashok Kumar Gupta, sir, to please deliver his presidential address. Mr. Chandrasekharan, Chairman Tata Sons, I know he has left. Uh, Dr. B. M. Bansal, Chairman, New Delhi Institute of Management, eminent personalities, distinguished board of directors, faculty members, and my dear students. I am delighted to be here at the convocation ceremony to award postgraduate diplomas in management. This institution has carved out a unique place for itself amongst various MBA schools, and I must compliment each and everyone associated with it for maintaining these exceptionally high standards. I convey my heartiest congratulations to the 23rd batch in whose honor this function has been organized. I would also like to convey my sincere thanks to my friend, Dr. V.M. Bansalji, for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts with you. We have all passed out from a very prestigious institution and this must rightfully give you a sense of pride. This is a landmark moment in your lives. Since you, are all, since you all will be occupying positions that will be instrumental in building various organizations, I should tell you something based on my 40 years of experience as a civil servant that will help you manage those positions. You should enjoy work. Whatever assignment is given to you, should be executed with a sense of joy and purpose. If you really want to enjoy an assignment, you have to go into the details and understand the fundamentals of various issues. Once you gain a command over the subject, you will see that you will start enjoying the work and excellence will follow. In a long career, it is entirely possible that you don't always get an assignment of your choice. That will be tough, but your attitude towards such assignments will have a bearing on the nature of subsequent assignments. You will be judged by your contributions to assignments that may not be very glamorous or to your liking or which no one wants to do. But once you deliver such assignments, your versatility and talent will be appreciated and will stand out amongst your peer groups. Here I would like to quote technology pioneer Steve Jobs who said, your work is going to fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work 
and the only way to do great work is to love what you do please note in some situations you may not have to love what you do the choice might not be yours as we all know verbal communication is only a minor part of total communication often what is not verbally articulated expresses itself through body language at all times note that your body reflects your state of mind if you are not enjoying your work even though you may not say so in as many words your body language will reveal it unless you are a great actor so when you interact your entire body should be involved the movements of your hands head etc should reflect your enthusiasm conversely it is important that as you move up in hierarchy you begin reading the body language of your juniors and not merely depend on verbal communication that will help you with decision making in any assignment there should be clarity of thought and no confusion about any issue in the bhagavad gita shri krishna said that the confused mind makes a person lose one's ability to reason and power to solve one's problems should any confusion persist it is incumbent on you to resolve such doubts doing so will bring a remarkable measure of consistency in your decision making never make a decision that is not in line with your convictions if your decisions are based on extraneous factors you will find that they lack consistency and cause problems i'll give you an example i know an officer who was the home secretary of a state he sanctioned someone's criminal prosecution the aggrieved person went to court stating that the home secretary had sanctioned the prosecution in just two days which shows that there had been no application of mind you will be surprised to know the reply of the home secretary he stated that he clears all files on the same day but since this was an important file that required application of mind it took two days the court accepted his defense based on his track record he had such a high degree of clarity that he never left anything pending clarity of thought will not only ensure consistency but will also help dispose of matters faster always maintain good relations with your boss peers and subordinates maintaining good relations does not mean being a conformist not challenging other people's views one can be firm as well as cordial good relations hinge on clear communication between professionals therefore it is always important to listen very carefully to what the other person is saying and not jump to conclusions it is also important to pay due respect to your boss the reasons are twofold your boss definitely has more experience than you and secondly be at a higher vantage point in the organization your boss has a better understanding of the vision of the organization i have seen some cases where people narrate and treat any instance of disagreement with their boss as a badge of honor it never pays off and only serves to lower the degree of professionalism at the workplace and people eventually begin viewing that person with circumspection i am not trying to say that there cannot be a genuine difference of opinion between you and your boss however you must not only be cautious between but courteous and polite while communicating such a difference of opinion as plato once said wise men speak because they have to they have something to say fools speak because they have to say something during your career you will come in touch with senior officers who are your well wishers try to remain in touch with them they could be your mentors and provide useful guidance in difficult situations but do remember that a senior officer would like to reciprocate and be in touch with a junior officer only if he or she feels that the junior officer has some potential and if groomed well can become an excellent officer hence you have to give a good account of yourself before establishing such a mutual relationship after all senior officers are inclined and positively disposed towards mentoring junior officers who have proven themselves and are going to be an asset to their organizations always try to maintain a good and healthy work life balance give time to your family look after your children 
for it is your responsibility to bring them up to become good citizens of this country this may require you to curtail activities that do not help you in the long run either personally or professionally work life balance is often a neglected area and people later regret not giving enough time to their family contrary to popular belief this regret does not dissipate with the passage of time but only becomes more intense therefore take care take care of your spouse children and parents from the beginning and only then you will find that you have achieved satisfaction in life when you do justice to your personal and professional life you have understood the true meaning of life related to this keep your conduct above board at all times you are being judged all the time whether you are in office or at home no amount of preaching works your children will copy you in toto if you are sincere in your dealings your children will imbibe the same qualities similarly you are being observed by your senior <coughs> colleagues and subordinates so it is in your interest to put your best put put forward, forward all the time if you want to do well in life expressing yourself clearly is very important if you have the ability to express your ideas with clarity you will find that you are able to carry your proposals through in today's age this is becoming all the more important there are a number of assignments where the ability to put your views across is highly appreciated as you move up in hierarchy your responsibilities as a leader will increase you will be required to tell your team about your vision and in such a scenario articulation becomes extremely important you will soon find that irrespective of the unit division or section you are heading your work may require you to inspire your juniors and highlight your plan of action so that your team works seamlessly this brings me to a related point you should always have a vision for your organization the story of session the chief election commissioner in the 90s is a striking example of the transformation that an individual can bring about he redefined the status and visibility of the election commission of india he had a vision and implemented a series of electoral reforms that had never been done before he articulated and implemented his vision with ruthless efficiency and the election commission was never the same thereafter as an officer always follow the spirit of the rule and never constrain yourself by the technicality of the rule it is for you to creatively interpret the rule to achieve the desired purpose rules exist for your guidance and do not cover each and every situation trust me no one has landed in any trouble for not following the rules provided provided the decisions are made in the larger interest of the organization and without any hidden agendas on the contrary i know a case where an officer blindly followed rules and landed in serious trouble why because an officer is expected to keep his or her eyes and ears open while following rules you should have a knack for getting work done rather than blaming rules people who succeed are fiercely outcome oriented and have transformed organizations with the same set of rules it is their administrative acumen clarity of thought and positive outlook that ultimately yield the desired results you may have seen numerous instances where an organization is totally transformed with a change in leadership thus never use rules as an excuse for not doing things this is a sign of weakness and lack of self confidence the law is just a set of instructions and has to be interpreted in the context of ever changing real scenarios as the honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji tells make yourself aware of ground realities and fulfill the aspirations of people accordingly aspirations are dynamic and contextual but the law remains the same hence the spirit of law supersedes the letter to conclude everything you choose to do is a step towards your future and will become a part of who you are just as the choices you made in university and your memories at the new delhi institute of management have become a part of each and every one of you it will start molding your personality and a unique identity will start emerging people will talk about you as you move from one place to another in fact your likes and dislikes biases and prejudices will be known to people before you take up a new assignment 
your rise will follow a scientific process and will be contingent upon multiple feedbacks from various stakeholders it may appear, it may appear to you that life is very long but it is not so i vividly remember 1981 when joint i indian administrative service these 40 years have whisked by as it is in cricket which is a one ball game in life too you have to focus on the issue confronting you at that point of time this is a sign of an uncluttered mind so live each day with complete consciousness and soon you will observe that you will carve out a career that is resilient to the vagaries of fortune on that optimistic note i would like to conclude with a quote by thomas jefferson who said i find that harder i work the more luck i seem to have once again heartiest congratulations to all students and the family members on this great occasion and thank you dr bansal saab for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you sir